What's going on, everybody? This is Sean with Strangeland Oddities, and I am with the great Kane Hodder. How the hell are you doing, man? Wow, thank you for giving me that uh, plug that I forced you to say. I'm doing good. Happy he, to be here again. It's always a fun town. He did force me. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, we have a couple of fan questions that um, people have submitted. Now, uh -oh. a couple are people that you know on a personal level. Is that um, right? First one is Robert Conway. Oh, Robert, yes. When you yes. did Exit to Hell. Right. He, he gave me some nice stuff to do in that film. That was a lot of fun because uh, a lot of times people don't trust me to pull off some of the things he had me do, so I was happy to do it. Right. Now, one of his questions is, he says, if, uh, if you're ever down to play Sickle again, if we do an Exit to Hell Part 2. Oh, of course. I, I love playing the character. And then, you know, working with friends who are talented performers also, like Tiffany Shepes. Uh, I One of my favorite scenes is w when she's tied up in the, the chair and I'm talking to her. I use that scene in some of the reels, that uh, demo reels and stuff. But yeah, I'd definitely be down to play Sickle again. I love the, the name anyway. Yeah, no, it definitely <laughs> sticks out. I th he was saying that Sickle should have his own type of spinoff. Okay, I, I'll go for that. <laughs> It'd be a nice children's show, wouldn't it? Sickle and the kids? Maybe not. Now, the other fan question I got is from another mutual friend, Tate Steinsek. Uh, we were hanging out on the Walker Stalker cruise. Uh, we did an ATV excursion uh, through the Mexican jungle. And um, I mentioned that because I spoke to Judy. And right. um, I was really supposed to do, you know, you, Bill, and Sid. And obviously, Sid couldn't make it. But I'm going to do Sid in, at Monst uh, uh, Mad Monster Party. Uh -huh. um, but he was telling me that when he first met you 15 years ago at a convention, how he met you, he had his booth next to you. And I think I'll let you take the, the, the story on oh, no. the Asprey. <laughs> well, uh, he was fairly unknown at the time in the business. But that actually it doesn't factor into anything. Uh, I have a spray, a spritz, as it were, that's called liquid ass. <laughs> you can imagine what it smells like. And I love to prank people at conventions with it. And I did that to Tate for most of the weekend before he realized what I was doing. You just spray it and it makes the area in which you spray it smell terrible. I mean, it's worse than anything you can imagine. And uh, so he was, you know, he's in the club along with people like Danielle Harris and, and right. Robert England, who I uh, initiated with that spray. So I, I enjoy it because it pisses people off. <laughs> yeah, his uh, r his little rendition of it was, he's like, man, I was doing a signing, and I was I thought these people shit their pants. And he's like, it turns out, he's like, Kane told me he sprayed it right in the crack of my ass, and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. And it's not even necessary to spray on somebody, but in his case, I thought it would be more effective to spray it on his ass itself so that everybody thought the smell was coming from there. And did he tell you what I uh, what my nickname for him is? No. Oh, because when he first introduced himself, I thought he said his name was Taint. <laughs> so I, to this day, still call him Taint. Taint Steinsek. Actually, this is uh, speaking of Tate. This is his Mexican doppelganger in Cozumel on our excursion. Wow, that is definitely him. You went on the Walker Stalker cruise to where? To Cosmo? It was a four day cruise to Mexico. Um, everybody was there except for Andrew Lincoln wasn't there. Um, Lauren Cohen had to cancel, but they brought John Bernthal in, which uh, was actually pretty cool. Um, I, I went on uh, that same cruise on November 1st November out 1st? of New Orleans. That's where you went, right? Right. On the Impractical Jokers cruise. That's right. I saw you in the commercial for Six Man, which yeah. I still have my Six Man Media. Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, I went on their cruise because Q is a friend of mine, and he was in, you know, Victor Crowley. 
So uh, because we've known each other for a while, they invited myself and, uh, you know, they had, they had a lot of other comedians and stuff, but they invited me and Adam Green to go on, so we did. It was a lot of fun. It's amazing that a group like Impractical Jokers can fill a cruise ship. Yeah. I understand filling it with, you know, uh, Walking Dead fans and stuff like that. It was but. crazy, and the the whole ride up there was horrible. Everybody got sick. Norman Reedus was wearing five uh, motion sickness bracelets on each arm. Uh, Robert Kirkman said he uh, looked like Johnny Depp with the bracelets. Oh, that's and, funny. And during the John Bernthal pan panel, the ship kept moving, and he's like, "Whoa!" He's like. I know I'm a, I'm a big guy, but y'all aren't scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know you know my signature pose used to be a choking pose, right? Which I'm not doing anymore. But that's not the point of the story. I had I had done the the pose with all kinds of people at uh, Walker Stalker, uh, usually in Atlanta here, and I was getting ready to leave for the day and. Somebody came over and said, hey, man, how come I don't get the choking picture? So uh, I did it, and it was Norman, and uh, it's still on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I got Norman choking me as well twice. Uh, people don't choke me. I choke them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could choke you. I think I'd, I'd get knocked out real real quick with that <laughs> it, one. It wouldn't go well for you. No, it wouldn't. It would be a story, though. Actually, hey, it would be. A that's a good story. If I knocked him out right now on camera, wouldn't that be an amazing story to be able to tell? Because you're not going to sue me because I'm going to do it real hard. Oh, I haven't punched anybody in hours. So that actually hurt. <laughs> um, now, obviously, everybody knows you for being Jason Voorhees. You know, I'm not going to get too deep into the Jason part. Um, now, you got Victor Crowley that just came out. Uh, your hatchet films are amazing. Uh, I, you know, for an upcoming, I, mem I remember I met you back in 2010 at a tattoo convention. Right. And you signed it. Um, I was going through a, a divorce at the time, and I was doing for, a, 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 I believe it was Sling and Ink magazine. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed you, and I interviewed Sid as well. And I was telling you how I lost all my collections and everything. And you know, obviously you make your money off of your merch and stuff like that, but you were very kind and humble and you said, you know what, you, you signed, hi, my, my name is Jason and you gave me a Victor Crowley thing and you signed it and you gave it to me and said, here, start your collection. Oh, yeah. And wow, that's you, cool. you should see how my collection looks now since that, that day. Um, so give us a little insight since Victor Crowley just hit Blu-ray and DVD. Well, I mean, I've always said I've loved playing Jason, and I was always a huge fan of the Friday the 13th movies. But when Adam Green asked me to play his new character, Victor Crowley, in the first film, it was also an honor because this is something that hopefully no one else will play the character. Right. With Jason, there's been several other people that played Jason, so I can't claim that I'm the only one. I mean, I did it more than anyone else, but still, there's been other guys that did great performances as the character. Right. Victor Crowley is mine, and it feels good to know that. And this this fourth movie, titled Victor Crowley, the, it, people have to remember that the first three movies took place over one weekend time frame. That's oh, how wow. it's supposed to be viewed. The, that's why they were the second one picked up right where the first one left off and, and so on. So the first three movies took place over one weekend. Now Victor Crowley is 10 years later. And it's still just as well written as ever with the, the comedy angles and interesting characters and the dynamic between the actors. It's, Adam is so good at bringing in actors that can pull that off naturally without making it look like that's what they're trying to do so uh, once again great actors in the movie funny fun performances and violent as fuck and the violence is the best part <laughs> yeah i think so but <laughs> he he adam used more close-up shots of victor this time, this time which you've never really seen 
that long on the face and he really liked how the makeup looked and he wanted to see Victor thinking more and I love it because as a fan when you're watching you really see Victor doing things now in his in his decision making so um, and a lot of people a lot of fans are saying this is their favorite hatchet movie of all so nice. when you can do a fourth one and a big uh, portion of the audience thinks it's their favorite then you've done something pretty good right and you also just did a uh, movie with uh, Sid Haig um, Death House Death House yeah that was great I mean I have a really big uh, nice role in it and uh, every person that's involved in horror practically is in the movie oh, so beautiful. it's so many different faces you're going to recognize and I felt very fortunate that I had a, a nice big role um, the the two uh, lesser known actor and actress the main characters are just amazing in the movie I think they're both really really good and they they carry the movie and it's just people like us that you know kind of help right now I'm gonna go back to your documentary that that you made. Um, you know, I I watched it a, a bunch of times, and you can tell you know that you were reliving the hor the, the true horror that went on in your life. Um, how hard was that to you know remake and kind of relive what happened to you? I mean, it, you know, it's a it's a tough story to talk about some of the the shit I went through but a lot of people go through a lot of tough things so uh, I not I didn't really tell those stories to try and elicit um, sympathy from the audience but to maybe more so show people that think nobody knows how they feel that there are some people that have been through some shit and I understand when uh, people are in that position so uh, I'm definitely a better person because of what I had to endure. So if if at least there's that, then you know uh, it's worthwhile. I mean, I would never recommend anything like that, but right. you know, if, if it improves you as a human, then uh, there's some some benefit to it. Yeah, the reason I watched it a, a, a bunch of times is because it actually hit home to heart really big. Right. And Oh, we got Bill Mosley here. <laughs> Bill just gave me some poison food. Bill Mosley, he's trying to get rid of me for years. No, these are scat samples. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering why you haven't you eaten more. To, you need to improve your diet. Well, they're yours. I'm just wondering why you haven't eaten more. Usually, these would have been gone within the first 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, yes. You got those at... at Oh, Walmart. Okay. Walmart. That was a quick cameo by Bill Mosley, people, for those of you who don't know him. One of my favorite films that I've done many films with Bill. Yes. One of my favorite ones is one called Old 37, uh, where we play brothers the, that are kind of fucked up in the head, actually, and turns out I'm the... Paramedics. I'm the less fucked up one. Can you do the chicken dance? No, I can't. Ah. Do you know that was an ad lib, right? Ah. He f came up with that on the fly. Really? That was not scripted. Um, and he briefly mentioned it to me as a courtesy. What if I say this and, and <laughs> make you do this? And I said, fucking brilliant, man. That's what is so enjoyable to work with people like him is that he comes up with, you know, things on the fly. So there's no way it can look rehearsed because nobody knew it was coming. And everybody just went along with it. It's like it's, a last minute improvision that yep. just kind of just stuck and yep. it just worked. So, you know, one of my favorite scenes in the movie because of that. It just, in, in that one quick scene, you feel a little sympathy for my character and dislike him more. And then you ended up turning on him. Right. <laughs> so it was a pivotal moment. Nice. All right. Well, we're going to cut this interview short because it is Sunday. It's everybody is tired. They want to 
you know, go home. They want to move on to the next convention that's I don't going on. Have to go to jail again because I get cranky with somebody and do something like that.